Next, they take Jesus before Pilate, and he is the Roman governor who's in charge of Jerusalem. So here, the high priest and his fellows take Jesus over to the Roman governor, Pilate, where he is going to now have to answer to the governor. So this is in Matthew 27, 11. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. So at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting in the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and, have, and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Christ? Pilate asked them. They all answered, Crucify him! Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Do you think they had any idea, the people that were saying this, what they were asking when they said, let his blood be on us, let the guilt be on us and on our children? Wow. And just to make sure that there is no misgivings here, this is not a Jewish and Christian thing. Jesus was Jewish. He is the promised Jewish Savior, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Christianity is not a separate religion at that point. It is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Today we would call it a Messianic Jew somebody who believes that Jesus is the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. This part here has sometimes been taken out of context and said that this was, when they said, let it be on us and on our children, that this was something against the Jews. It's not. All the disciples were Jewish. Um, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Jewish prophecies. He was Jewish himself. We are engrafted into the line of the Jewish people when we become believers in their Messiah. Jesus' trials are not over at that point. He does not just get to die. We're still in Matthew 27, 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus to the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him, put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him and they led him away to crucify him.